Sutra. It is because he decides to completely know the afflictions of coverings and the afflictions of obstructions that he brings forth a mind of great compassion and of rescuing and protecting. And it is in order to cut asunder the net of all afflictions and to cause the nature of all wisdom to be purified that he brings forth the mind for Nutara Samyak Sambodhi. Commentary. It is because he desires to completely know the afflictions of coverings and the afflictions of obstructions. Because of covering, there arise afflictions. Afflictions belong to darkness, yin, and obscurity, like when the sun can't be seen. The sun belongs to yang. Our basically bright natures are covered by the five kinds of black clouds of greed and desire. An example of this greed and desire is when a man feels he has to go look for a girlfriend and a woman feels he has to look for a boyfriend. By seeking something, you become covered. What is covered? The wisdom of your self-nature and the self-nature's pure light. It is like the sun in space which gets covered up by five clouds. This covering causes you to give rise to afflictions and it is analogous to a man trying to find a girlfriend because he looks but can't find one. He tries all kinds of methods to find one. He runs off to the church to find one, to the flower garden or to the bus station or to the grocery store or to a movie show or to a musical play or to a dance. He can't find a girlfriend. So he gives rise to afflictions. Wouldn't you say this is a covering? And there is also anger. After giving rise to the affliction of anger, one sees that there is just no way to find a girlfriend, and so one goes to sleep. One only wants to sleep and eat. This is called muddled sleep. When one sleeps until one is totally confused, then recklessness arises. When restlessness comes, one doesn't know anything. One doesn't know what is right or, or wrong. From restlessness arise more doubts, so that one doesn't believe anything at all. So because greed and desire are not fulfilled, there arise five kinds of coverings. Also, there's another way to explain them. What are the five kinds of black clouds? They are wealth, sex, fame, food, and sleep. If you have greed for wealth or sex or fame or food or sleep, you cover up, up uh, all wisdom, nature. Those are the five coverings. How would you explain the affliction of obstructions? If you don't know, just that is an obstruction which produces afflictions like when you say, I don't know. To know it is also an obstruction, the obstruction of knowledge. The obstruction of knowledge is just not knowing. Because of knowledge, one knows too much. So that what one knows also becomes a kind of obstruction. This is an attachment to dharmas. You may say the affliction of obstruction is a kind of attachment to a self. There are two kinds of obstructions. You can also add the three obstructions, that is, the obstruction of afflictions the obstruction of karma, and the obstruction of retribution. Ultimately, how many of these obstructions are there? How many, however many you wish to say? So this is the affliction of obstruction. It's because there are the afflictions of coverings and the afflictions of obstruction, all of which are very heavy afflictions that he brings for the mind of great compassion and of rescuing and protecting. A mind of great compassion is a mind of great kindness and compassion. It is also a mind of sympathy and pity for living beings. So it is said, compassion pulls beings out of suffering. It takes these living beings out of suffering. This is the mind of great compassion. A mind of great compassion does not see people's faults. Therefore, it is also said, all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas do not see the faults of living beings. 
which is the manifestation of the mind of great compassion. This is the mind of great compassion flowing forth. The mind of rescuing and protection is the mind which rescues and protects all living beings. The Bodhisattva brings forth these kinds of minds. And it is in order to cut asunder the net of all afflictions. Jew people do not see this, but people have many afflictions which are mutually intertwined like a net. You net me and I net you. You won't permit me to get out of the triparium and I won't permit you to escape the turning wheel. We are netted and entangled like this so that within the turning wheel of the six paths, we are unable to get out. To be unable to get is being in the mutual net of afflictions. Jew afflictions are connected with my afflictions and my afflictions are also connected with your afflictions and they mutually produce more afflictions. Now the Bodhisattva wishes to sever the net of afflictions which ensnars us to and to cause the nature of all wisdom to be purified. It is because he wishes to cause our originally existent fundamental wisdom nature our wondrous bright true mind to be purified that he brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. Because of this, he brings forth the mind for unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment. Sutra, disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, suppose there is a person who in a single thought moment uses all kinds of superior tasting food, incense, flowers, clothing, streamers, canopies, as well as saharamas and supreme and wondrous palaces, jeweled curtains, nests and screens, and different kinds of adorned lion thrones, as well as a multitude of wondrous jewels to make offerings to countless Buddhas in the East, as well as all, all of the living beings in countless world systems. Commentary Dharma Wisdom Bodhisattva again calls out, Disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, don't speak of this analogy, let's put it aside for now. I am going to speak another analogy for you. Suppose there is a person, basically there isn't such a person, but now let's hypothetically assume there is a person like this, who in a single thought moment, Within the time of a single thought, uses all kinds of superior tasting food, food that is the very best in appearance, scent and taste. It looks very good, tastes very good, and it is very fragrant. Also, incense and flowers, perhaps he uses all kinds of incense, or all kinds of flowers, or all kinds of clothing, or all kinds of streamers and canopies, as well as sangharamas, which are still quiet places where people of the Sangha abide and the supreme and wondrous palaces, the best palaces, jeweled curtains, nets, and screens. Perhaps he uses jeweled nets or jeweled screens and all kinds of adorned articles, such as the seven jewels, to fashion different kinds of adorned lion thrones upon which the Buddha sit. He offers this, this as well as a multitude of wondrous jewels. This as well as a multitude of wondrous jewels. The Bodhisattva uses all of them to make offerings to countless Buddhas in the East as well as all of the living beings in countless world systems. Sutra, he reveres and venerates, worships and praises them and he bows to and gazes up at them continuously without cease, passing through countless compass, and he exhorts those living beings to all make offerings to the Buddhas up to the point that after those Buddhas' extinction, they erect stupas for each one of them. Those pagodas are high and vast as countless walls and are made of jewels and have various kinds of adornments. Within each pagoda, there are images of countless thirst ones, whose light shines everywhere in countless world systems, passing through countless compass in the south, north, and west, 
the four intermediaries above and below. It is also like this, disciple of the Buddha, what do you think? Does this person have much merit and virtue? The heavenly ruler chakra said, only the Buddha can know this person's merit and virtue. All others are not able to fathom it. Disciple of the Buddha, this person's merit and virtue compared with the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind does not reach a hundredth part, nor a thousandth part, nor a hundred thousandth part up to the part that it does not reach one part in an Upanishad. Commentary, the person in this analogy makes offerings to innumerable Buddhas and all the living beings in innumerable world systems. Then he revels and venerates, worships and praises them. He revels, worships and praises all Buddhas and venerates beings and he boasts to all of them. This gesture shows a lot of respect and decorum. He prostrates prostrates himself reverently, or perhaps he places his palms together and gazes up at them. He gazes up at all the Buddhas and he also gazes at all the living beings continuously without cease, continuously without ever stopping. For how long does he do this? Passing through countless compass such a long period of time, and he exalts those living beings. Afterwards, he resolves on exhausting all the living beings in those innumerable world systems to all make offerings to the Buddhas. He also causes all living beings to make offerings to all Buddhas the same way he himself does. Up to the point that after those Buddhas extinction, they erect stupas for each one of them. After those Buddhas extinction, they make offerings to each of those Buddhas sharira. So, they create this kind of merit and virtue. Those pagodas are high and vast as countless world. These pagodas are so high and broad that no other pagodas can compare with them. And they are made of jewels and have various kinds of adornments. Within each pagoda, there are images of countless thirst come ones. Within each pagoda, those living beings make offerings to the Buddha's images, whose light shines everywhere. The adornments of the Buddha images are made from a multitude of jewels, so their jeweled light shines everywhere in countless world systems, passing through countless compass. This all takes place for innumerable compass in the south, north, and west, and the four intermediaries above and below, the ten directions. It is also like this. They are all this way. Disciple of the Buddha, what do you think? How do you feel about this? Does this person have much merit and virtue? The heavenly ruler chakra said. The heavenly ruler chakra answered Dharma Wisdom Bodhisattva's question, saying, only the Buddha can know this person's merit and virtue. Only the Buddha is able to know how much merit and virtue he has. All others are not able to fathom it. All the other Bodhisattvas are unable to fathom how much merit and virtue this is. Disciple of the Buddha, Dharma Wisdom Bodhisattva again says, Although the merit and virtue spoken of in the analogy before is a lot, yet this person's merit and virtue compared with the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind does not reach a hundredth part. This person's merit and virtue does not equal a hundredth part of the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the body mind, nor does it reach a thousandth part, nor a hundred thousandth part thousandth part up to the part that it does not reach one part in an Upanishad. Even if it is the very greatest number, the highest amount, still that person's merit and virtue does not reach a single part of the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the body mind.